How to retire in 10 years, an easy step-by-step. -step. Try following the steps if you're wondering how to retire in 10 years. This is a simple tutorial for people who are actually near retirement, as well as for younger folks who want to create a nest egg big enough to cover their expenses while they pursue life interest other than work. By making a few specific adjustments, planning properly and enlisting the guidance of financial professionals, you may retire sooner than you think. Welcome back folks to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. If you were to ask me, I hope you are doing fantastic. If you're doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today we, we're having a salient topic here. How do, how do you retire within a decade? Number one, assess your financial situation. Now, if you're wondering how to retire in 10 years, you want to start evaluating your current financial situation. You can start making a list of all your retirement accounts. And here I'm talking about IRA accounts, 401k, taxable account you have earmarked for retirement. At this time, you don't really need to include your emergency fund or those assets you have currently. It's just very important to see what will be available to you during re retirement, right? So when it comes to savings, we have a wide area of tools and accounts. You have a retirement accounts, you have rainy day accounts also called emergency f uh, funding, but you also have regular savings account. And if you're lucky, you might probably have certificate of deposits and traditional money market account. So assess your financial situation. That will give you a clear idea of where you are right now in terms of economic stability or financial freedom. The second thing you need to do is to set clear retirement goals. You can't retire in 10 years if you don't have a goal or several goals for that matter. So if once you establish your financial goals and objectives, you got to have a way to plan for your golden years. You got to have whether it is in Excel, an Excel spreadsheet or on a mobile app or a free or free software you download from the Internet. You need to have a plan and the goal will help you determine the the actions you need to take to reach that goal. For example, do you need to downsize and move to a smaller home? Right. Most people, when they're 65 or 60, you know, the, the kids are grown. The kids are out of the house. You don't need a, a four bedroom or a five bedroom. Right. Do you want to spend all your time traveling? A lot of retirees are they love traveling. Some people love being busy. Uh, participating in uh, philanthropy or helping uh, helping the younger younger folks others who like to travel and indulge in the same passions they haven't been able to indulge in in uh, during their active years now depending on your financial goals you may need a different level of financial support in other words if you are espousing an active retirement lifestyle chances are you're going to need much more money than if you were to just chill, relax, and just be at the beach or just read and be comfortable in, I would say, a more quiet, a quieter lifestyle. So, for example, if you wanted to downsize and live a simple life, you certainly would not need as much money as, as if you wanted to, as I said earlier, travel the world. So you would need to take the time to identify the lifestyle you like to have in retirement so you can properly figure out how to retire in 10 years. Now, another thing you need to do when, when it comes to establishing retirement goals is to estimate your regular expenses. By regular expenses, I'm talking about everything from groceries to healthcare, to travel entertainment, to clothing, to cars, all those regular expenses, including of course, housing, right? Whether you're paying mortgage or you are renting in addition to ancillary housing cost here i'm talking about you know maintenance anything that's needed to main, to maintain the house from plumbing to renovation to gardening etc etc so you also want to include cost of insurance on the house but insurance in general as well right so that's for number two the third thing you want to do is select a retirement date 
it is very important something extraordinary happens in the brain when you set a date on something right because if you think about it a goal a dream is a goal without a date right everybody wants to everybody's dreaming about something but once you have once you set a date a deadline for that dream it becomes a goal so of course if you want to retire in 10 years you need to put a date on that 10 years 10 years can be anything i mean 10 years 10 years today wouldn't be 10 years tomorrow it wouldn't be 10 years six months from now it would be when, 10 years will become nine years next year exactly 365 days from today what i'm trying to say here is that if, if the target is moving then you'll never you'll never achieve what you want to achieve but if you set a date set in stone and say listen on sunday march 25th 2030 or 2040 whatever the date works for you i'm gonna retire and you kind of visualize this every single day chances are you are going to get it right so to select the best retirement date you will not only have to consider when you want to retire but also the amount of time you'll be in retirement nowadays we live we're, we're very lucky at least in the west to live 30 25 to 30 years post retirement a lot of folks are dying in their 90s for women and uh in their late 80s for for men so what i'm trying to say here is that life expectancy are continuing are continuing to rise so you could be in retirement for several decades so the thing here is that if you are going to be in retirement for 30 years that's a lot of years without money or there's a lot of years with um little, little money so you got to think about this and make sure that you achieve a balance between the size of your retirement portfolio the amount of time your nest egg can support your lifestyle as you age and your retirement date i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi we are still having a wonderful conversation around retirement early retirement you want to retire early but you want to do it properly if you love the clarity and quality of the content we are hearing so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you are informed whenever we drop a new show. And we do this every single day. <laughs> Comment below. We want you to smash the like button also and share this content. We have millions of folks out there who are dreaming of retiring early. Some wants, well, some wants to um, retire within five years or ten years regardless of the length of time you are considering the tips here can apply number four you want to identify revenue sources now your retirement savings should provide a substantial amount of monthly income to help support your lifestyle in your golden years right now income income can flow from several sources outside of your savings as well so you want to make sure that you are including everything in your calculation for example some uh, most workers qualify for social security benefits now we've heard a lot in the media about the social security fund being uh, a little weak at the moment or lethargic because of mismanagement but let's be honest let's be optimistic let's hope that by the time you retire there'll be money in the fund so you can actually get some money from the the, um, the the government so besides the social security you also want to think about your investments do you have investments do you have a uh, regular dividends all that kind of stuff so you need to identify all the revenue sources that will constitute the bulwark of your life the financial bulwark of your life during your golden years number five fix your savings gap if you have a savings gap you, you want to fix it now what is the gap the gap here is that you need to identify how much you will need during retirement and versus how much you will have based on the current amount of savings you have right so you can use an average interest rate and compound that interest rate over 10 years and sort of see whether or not this is um this is sufficient now there are a lot of tools out there on the internet you don't need to hire a financial advisor for this there are a lot of tools out there even in excel basic excel can really t show you if you have the the present value of an amount and you're trying to figure out the future value of that amount based on a certain interest rate you can actually have that and uh, compare conversely you can also take 
the future amount that you will need during retirement and discount that. In other words, you're using, you're going backwards as opposed to forward. So you, you're going from the future into the present to, to see if that future value will correspond to how much the future value will correspond in today's dollars using an interest rate. So whatever it is, whatever, whatever strategy you use, you want to fix your savings gap. In other words, you need to save more. You need to maybe get a side hustle if needed. Whatever you need to do, you have to do it. Because remember here, you want to retire within a decade, within 10 years, right? So you got to make a little sacrifice also to be able to reach your goals. Number six, assess your risk tolerance. Now, tolerance is a risk tolerance is very important, right? So you have people who are risk averse and people who are risk takers and you have some people right in between. Now, risk averse means that you don't like risk. You don't like taking risk at all. A risk taker, I mean, the, the the term implies that you love risk. Now, of course, it has to be calculated risk, right? You, you can't just like invest in the market bluntly. You need to use some kind of strategy, some kind of investment tactics here. So you want to assess your risk tolerance. As you age, your risk tolerance may change, right? Because a lot of investors, when they begin approaching retirement, they may gradually transition to a more conservative risk tolerance that's what i call risk aversion they're they're risk averse right so if you for instance you want to retire let's say in five years and the economy is facing a bear market we are in a recession you might want to stay clear from the stock market for example because you don't have a lot of time right if you're 61 62 you want to invest in fixed income save products such as the usd bills or usd bonds or other sort of triple a AAA rated corporate bonds right so your retirement portfolio should consist of high quality dividend stocks and bonds right because those two traits are both conservatives growth and income i'm talking here about stocks such as you know google or ibm or microsoft i'm not i'm not advocating for any of those stocks but i'm just saying that there are some stocks that are very solid right you know they will be here for a long time the facebook you know the the, the tech biggies you know they are going to be around for, for a long time. They're not disappearing soon, right? So if you're an investor who is behind your retirement, behind on your retirement savings, one, one thing you want to do here is that please stick to the strategy you currently have. Don't be tempted to increase your risk to receive a high yield because high yield means high return means high risk. And God forbid something happen if you're 62, 63, 64, something happens, the economy is down, the stock market tank, the stock market tanks and stocks are down like by 70% or 80%. This might take decades for the whole market to come back together to its um, original, um, original level. And by that time, you might be gone already. Okay, so I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Story Cube. We're also having a conversation around how to retire in 10 years, and I'm giving you an easy step-by-step. -step. Things you can implement today. No need to make things convoluted or complicated, excessively complicated. Number seven, seek professional guidance. Of course, let me just give a little disclaimer here. This show is not about providing financial advice or retirement advice to anybody. We are an info infotainment show. We do research and we provide to you, the viewer, some, some general information. Now, it's up to you to reach out to professional, uh, professional experts, a professional expert, a professional who could guide you, who could understand your particular situation. And a professional advisor, a financial advisor is such a professional that you might need. So if you plan for retirement, things can go can get a little complex this is why you you may want to seek the guidance and expertise of a financial advisor right so a great an effective financial advisor can help you review your retirement plan and ensure ultimately that your portfolio maintains the proper asset allocation for your desired risk if you remember earlier i was talking about risk tolerance right so based on the risk tolerance level that you communicated to the financial advisor or that he or she advice that so just that you have you have to choose a a proper 
asset allocation level. Now, this means that what is proper proper asset allocation? Asset allocation means that you are mixing things up in your portfolio. Things means stocks, bonds, ETS, right? Exchange traded funds, mutual funds, whatever it is, whatever the, the, the mix is, you need to find something that fits your level of desire or, or desired risk. Now, financial advisor can also provide advice on estate planning. We had an entire show on financial advisor. You might want to check that um, that show. This will open. The, you know, we shed, we did shed lights on a lot of uh, topics. And a financial advisor, in addition to retirement planning and estate planning, they can also help with tax planning, right? And there are there are several professional designations that fit the the definition of financial advisor for instance you can have an ea an ea is an enrolled agent this is someone who has expertise with taxes he or she might help you with uh estate tax planning you can reach out to a cpa a certified public accountant they have this set of professionals they have a lot of experience when it comes to finance investments and other stuff so it's really it's really up to you to find out someone who fits the particular needs that you're having right now and if you do a, qu a quick search on the internet you can find a financial advisor near you number eight evaluate your progress even if you have created the perfect plan for how you want to retire in 10 years it is critical folks to monitor your progress and adjust as needed i would say review the progress on a quarterly basis or by annual basis because if you really think about it, if your goal is uh, 120 months, which is 10 years, you don't want to you, you don't want to review the progress every year. That's too short of a notice. You want to review this every quarter. Some people have even said that that you want to review this every month. But I think I think, and this is just my personal opinion, that every month is just too short. It's just too much. But every quarter is pretty reasonable. You just take the last. The last Saturday afternoon of every quarter, every three months, and you just, um, you know, look at your portfolio, see how things are going, and if there is anything uh, not working right, you can just adjust it, right? Uh, and uh, one thing you can also do is that you can also figure out how to allocate, how to rebalance your portfolio based on what's going on in the market. Number nine, bring your partner on board now. By partner, I'm talking about your spouse, your life partner, it can be your boyfriend, wh whoever shares your life with you at the moment, you want to bring that person on board because if you want to retire in 10 years and that person is not on board with uh, the kind of goals you have, this is not really effective, right? Retirement planning is a salient topic that partners should discuss. This is not, this is not a one person conversation or a monologue here unless you you are you are single but if you are in a relationship or you are you're married you want to have a dialogue around that you you want to make sure that you have the same vision and mission because again as i said earlier if you have a divergence of uh, viewpoints this divergence can derail your retirement plan right so bring your partner on board and have him or her be with you when you do the quarterly or biannual or annual review so everybody's on the same page all right folks this is it for today's conversation i really appreciate it how to retire in 10 years an easy step by step let me give you the recap here assess your financial situation set clear retirement goals select a retirement date identify a revenue sources fix your savings gap assess your risk tolerance seek professional guidance evaluate your progress you want you want to bring your partner on board all right i will talk to you next time but until then remember stay marvelous <laughs>